actually in here? Who is driving? Oh my god, Bear is driving. How can that be? Sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Didn't you already review this? Surprisingly, no. You know what you TV executives are complete tools, and the reason why they're not on Twitter is because they know everyone will ratio them. Most of the world's problems could be fixed if we tracked their families down, but until that glorious day comes, we gotta stick to what little they funded. If your TV show lasted only six episodes, it better be the best six episodes of all time. That's why I love Clerks, the animated series from the year 2000. With half a dozen installments, this was America's Fully Coolie until that anime made more episodes. Get bent, Gynax. Clerks was an adult cartoon of two retail workers doing their job as wacky stuff happens. It's one of my most favorite shows that greatly influenced my art, yet was utterly ruined by Disney, as usual. Also, without Clerks, we may have never have gotten Netflix's Castlevania. How so? Let's find out. Oh, and thanks to Bernie Vids for the extra voice help. They do vids on pop culture related weirdos. Not me though. Now, don't skip the intro, it's juice and jam time. This animated series was my gateway to its creator, Kevin Smith, a director who started in the 90s while several independent filmmakers were breaking out. Tarantino, Linkletter, Rodriguez, and Kevin Smith, all equally respected directors of equal quality. In 1984, Kevin made Clerks, a film about two burnouts, Dante and Randall, working retail just BSing about their day. They've worked hard enough. Isn't it time? They had their own movie. Clerks. This job would be great if it wasn't for the customers. I, I don't bother them and they don't bother me. Many found it relatable with how directionless these 20 somethings felt about their life. Plus, that casual reference filled dialogue was sort of comparable to a podcast, a similarity that Kevin would admit to, which is why he's got like 30 podcasts going on. Damn, I barely feel like doing one. Clerks was made for real cheap after Kevin funded the movie by selling his comic book collection. He also filmed in the same quick stop convenience store he was working at during the time. His crappy Game Boy tier camera did record in color, but the post production to get the colors right would have been too expensive, so to hell with that crap. With a budget of $27,000, which is insanely cheap for a film, Clerks scored 3 million in theaters and rocketed Kevin Smith's career. He created the View Askew Universe, a cinematic universe of loosely connected stories, but while he was busy with his next movie, Mallrats, a TV series was being made without his knowledge. Oh! Oh! I'm melting! I'm melting! I'm melting! You're weird! Clerks, the failed pilot. Only one episode was made and feels like it was based on a vague description of the movie without actually seeing it. This was the typical laugh track filled sitcom of cool, hip, young adults working retail. Any characters from the film were either recasted or missing. Kevin Smith himself found out about this pilot way too late into production to help. He had a script for a clerk show ready, but they didn't want it, though what he did write would later be saved for an animated series down the line. Even in 95, just one year after Clerks release, Kevin was willing to make a cartoon series, but at the time, unless you were The Simpsons, adult animation was still very shaky ground with so many instant cancellations. Remember Fish Police? I do! Though things were looking up further into the decade as the industry regained interest post-South Park, there was another gold rush for adult cartoons that mostly canceled after one season again. So yeah, this was their time to strike, now with the added help of David Mandel. Thanks for watching. A producer and writer for Seinfeld and Curb Your Enthusiasm. Sadly, pitching the series around to big channels like CBS or ABC was met with much rejection. Relatable. But they ain't gonna sit around cry masturbating for more than an hour. Shoot your goo, then your shot. This eventually led them to UPN. Yeah, the home of Dilbert. Well, I'll be. Who would've guessed it? 
I've been date raped by Dilbert. That channel wanted more cartoons, so they offered Kevin 12 episodes that would contractually air on TV. Sounds like a great deal, until one faithful phone call. Hello? No way. It's my day off. A call made by UPN President Dean Valentine, a former Disney TV executive. After hearing the clerk's pitch, he called up his friend, the then CEO of Disney, Michael Eisner, to brag about how great this clerk's cartoon was going to be and request Eisner to help him get the series for UPN. I think since Disney and Miramax partially own clerks is why he called for help in getting the rights, maybe? Anyway, Eisner at Disney was like, what is this clerks? And why does UPN want it so bad? You mean we rejected that clerk's pitch bring me clerks thank you for accepting my invitation what do you think of my desk i made it myself and i have all these pieces left uh it's great you think so sure Right, Randall? It's a piece of crap so kevin smith and his pals were brought to abc along with beloved film producer harvey weinstein ah! Yeah, Kevin's movies were under the Miramax and Weinstein Company, which was associated with Disney. Harvey Weinstein wanted the Clerks cartoon within the studio family. While UPN offered 12 episodes to air, Disney and ABC offered six, with no guarantee it'll air along with more restrictions on what's appropriate. Hmm, yes, interesting. Yeah, sounds like a crap deal. Kevin was not feeling it, but Weinstein convinced the crew, because think about it, ABC is a bigger channel. They could get more episodes if it goes well. Also, the Clerks movies are under Disney and Miramax, so only they can make the cartoon, which was a lie. They owned the movies, yet the TV rights were still up in the air. But Kevin didn't know that, which is why he signed his soul to Disney. Okay, well, it wasn't so bad. ABC was actually kind of excited. You see, in terms of viewership, they were in fourth place behind the other major networks. They were trying anything to grow an audience. Adult animation could be that niche that puts them over the top, yeah. Even the crew were really loving the job. It was this one little perfect moment in time where it looked like, wow, we might be fucking animators for the rest of our lives. We started doing indie film, but we may turn into fucking Jim Brooks and Matt Groening. I remember having fun. I remember loving that we were doing an animated cartoon and hoping that, oh my gosh, this is something that could go 10 seasons if we're lucky, like The Simpsons. And it would be really fun. Yeah, nice. Well, uh, as the first few episodes were being sent overseas to be animated, ABC went from fourth place in the ratings to number one, all thanks to a different series. everybody hello and welcome to a special edition of who wants to be a millionaire a prime time game show scheduled like it was the olympics airing night after night after night who wants to be a millionaire would be the first u.s game show with a million dollar top prize who wants to be a millionaire? Finally, someone asking the hard-hitting questions. After ABC found new life, that meant more game shows, more reality. Cartoons take too long, it's too expensive, who cares about that? Only weirdos obsessed with Cats Don't Dance care about animation. ABC no longer needed clerks and were practically doing anything they could to sabotage the show. Marketing was near non-existent and terrible. The release date was moved around and focus groups hated the series. To be fair, it was a 30 plus female demographic that was not interested in the show and were left over from the previous show they tested on. Oh, and ABC was always there telling the crew a joke was not allowed. They were explaining all the thousands of things we couldn't do, and at some point, uh, in a fit of anger, I think I said, well, why did, you know, if this, if you can't do any of this, why did they buy the show? And uh, I have to give the lawyer a lot of credit. They actually just sort of said, I'm not really sure why. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't, if they had asked me, I would have told them not to buy it. And that was probably about the only honest word we ever got. <laughs> yeah, really. From the legal department, no less. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were just unfamiliar with the material. Once it came to air, only two episodes were played out of order, which this series was full of running gags that required sequential viewing. In addition, one of those episodes aired late into the night because of some basketball game going overtime. So congrats if you actually saw it, because after that, Clerks was done. ABC never talked about it again. It was just so depressing. If I remember correctly, I recorded a message on my answering machine. 
I drove down to San Diego to visit some friends, but I left this message that was like, if you need to get a hold of me, I've left town because this is what happened. And if you're calling from ABC, go fuck yourself. When I came back, it was clear that someone had heard the message and then started telling people about it. And so I had all these people calling to listen to the message and then hang up. Eh, it could be worse. How? How could it ever be worse? Welcome to the three-hour version of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Ah! While the show was hidden away, years of reruns on better channels and a DVD release with the rest of the episodes gave Clerks a new life. A small but dedicated fandom circle jerking each other with the same five references over and over and over and over. We're starving over here. How many times do we gotta mention the bear is driving? We need new memes on this show, please. Personally, I first saw Clerks during the early YouTube days. It may have only lasted six episodes, but it's some of the best six episodes of your life. With all the goofiness, it's barely anything like the dialogue-heavy film, and more like the spin-off, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. The cartoon is way goofier, putting the slackers in dumb scenarios like causing a local pandemic or getting revenge on an evil billionaire. Come on, old chum. We're almost there. Why are we walking like this? But what really separates this from the movies is the crudeness had to be greatly toned down compared to those R-rated comedies. ABC gave them way more limitations, and honestly, it might have partially been a good thing. Partially. With all those limits, I feel like this forced the crew to get more outrageous rather than gross. Some of the most iconic lines on the show are completely random BS that no way fits the raunchy movies. Like the episode where the clerks are put through a frivolous lawsuit, but before the jury decides if they're guilty, the animation was supposedly lost overseas and the Korean animators had to finish the episode. We find in favor of... Big American Party! Yay! Everybody disco dancing! Lots of fun, good time for all! I'm having very good time! Are you surprised to find out all the dialogue here was unscripted and done in two takes by producer Dave Mandel? Like, how often have I referenced this clip in particular? Korean Animation Studio! Everybody work! Ah. Everybody work! Ah. Everybody work! He big mean man whip us! We are slaves! Kevin Smith made this cartoon for people who watch cartoons. As in, a lot of the episodes are parodies of familiar story cliches. Like you watched other TV shows do a clip show episode of recycled shots from previous seasons. Well, Clerks did a clip show on the second episode. Well, what about the time we had to break into Leonardo's office? We're almost there. Why are we walking like this? That was also the same time. So? So a lot more has happened to us than just last week. Yeah, there wasn't much content to recycle, so this clip show was made up of a bunch of new events we've never seen. They did this before Ed, Ed, and Eddie tried it. Fantastic idea, although Kevin still felt Clerks was not as funny as it could have been with all of ABC's restrictions. Like, the network wanted to change the name of the shop the Clerks worked at. Someone owned the name Quick Stop, so Kevin himself had to pay the rights to use it. Jay and Silent Bob, the stoners who hung out outside there, were no longer drug dealers. Instead, they sold illegal fireworks like some Dennis the Menace BS. And of course, who knows how many jokes had to be cut, though they still pushed the limits, specifically the surprising amount of gay jokes. But a lot of the edge was thanks to one of the show's directors, Steve Loader. I was fortunate that I had experience on a couple of subversive shows. I directed on Red and Stimpy and Duckman, so I knew what this show was walking in. I understood where the humor was, what lines you can cross, and how to be prepared for that level of controversy. Whereas maybe some of the other guys on it hadn't. We actually had a storyboard artist working on the show that was used to working on very safe children's programming. And she picked up a board from Clerks and came back a couple weeks later and said that she was going to have to leave the show. And I asked why, and, and you know, was she not getting what she wanted? And she said, I just know I'm going to hell for working on this show. <laughs> and she did. Yeah. Yeah. That was That's the, the funniest thing. thing. <laughs> we'll be back with more Clerks after this. Oh, don't you hate that? Well... Surfshark VPN! Yes, sir! The sponsor of tonight's video! What's a VPN? It's great! It changes your internet region and protects your privacy. You got Netflix? Just switch regions and bam! You can see what other countries have on their Netflix. It's that easy. How about something to keep you safe, especially on public 
Wi-Fi. Nothing can stop you. Use the code REBELTAXI to get 83% off and 3 months free. You got a 30 day money back guarantee. Oh what, you got an incognito window on your browser? Wow, that's completely useless. Surfshark VPN, it's got clean web. This thing will block malicious ads, trackers, and malware. Don't trust an internet provider, trust Surfshark VPN. Use the code REBELTAXI to get 83% off and 3 months free. VPN, money back guarantee. Yeah, I wanted to ask you how little you guys sold out for, and what it feels like to have no soul and a black heart. Oh, oh, and when will Ellen be guesting on your very gay show? Now, one of Disney's biggest worry is not the rampant amount of gay and race jokes. Nah, they didn't care. But God help you if you mocked any celebrities. At the start of every episode, the crew were forced into giving an overly long vocal disclaimer claiming most of the celebs here are impersonated. They tried getting the real deal, but it didn't always go well. Holy crap, isn't that Dirty Dancing's Patrick Swayze? Hey, Patrick. Great horse. Hey, Randall. I call the horse ghost like that movie I did. Gotcha. So you own this place, huh? Yeah. I do, of course. Tracy, get back to work. I'm not paying any gab with the customers. Dave Mendel is the one that's like, let's get Patrick Swayze. Well, Patrick Swayze doesn't want to do it. In fact, the word was that he was insulted by it. I guess he didn't think it was funny or whatever. But Dave's like, all right, let's get Gilbert Godfrey. Not only did Swayze want nothing to do with this, but ABC had a demand. The episode had to end with Swayze being casted in a film within the cartoon universe. <laughs> Come on! Though it did add to some more banter at least. Clerks even faced angering one of Disney's biggest sponsors with this scene. After a breakout of a contagious disease said to be caused by a monkey, oh no, the chief of police had to rush over to address the people after a costume party. Will this administration ever bring the Hamburglar to justice? No. Yes. Look, does anyone have a question about the deadly virus that could kill us all? Could the virus kill the Grimace? Nothing can kill the Grimace. And we had to go to the McDonald's people and convince them, which actually was probably a pretty big to-do. I mean, they really did look at this. Mm -hmm. And uh, they they went with it, which I, I give them a tremendous amount of credit for. And they hooked us up with character designs mm -hmm. of like what their characters looked like. But at first there was that step where they were like, well, we can't, you can't say nothing can kill the Grimace. Right. But we made the argument of like, but we're saying the, the Grimace, Grimace is, is so powerful, powerful <laughs> that so nothing strong. can kill the Grimace. The joke works in McDonald's favor. You, you, you just have that much power your characters are that powerful and they're like yeah yeah all right run with it white lando I where does like one that. meet the mcdonald's people though even with all the pod shots and famous people george lucas didn't mind them crapping on the star wars prequels for a full minute george seems like the kind of guy that's like yeah i hear your criticism and jokes you're free to do so but uh my world my ocs i do what i want <laughs> You gotta respect that. The power of myth. Isn't it true you knew this was a bad movie? That you wrote it over a weekend but kept telling people it was done for years? Did anybody from the uh, Lucas camp ever call you guys? Never. Lucas? George no. loved this. He has such a sense of humor, it's wonderful. He, there's nothing he likes more than, some, than a joke at his own expense. <laughs> So when I first discovered Clerks in the early days of YouTube, I was quickly hooked by the art. It just looked like the coolest cartoon ever. Slick outlines and blocky characters with the most stylish asset, the pant folds. Look, let me make a comparison. There's no folds on these pants? Well, look at it now. Yeah, son, that is stylish. Thanks to Clerks, it taught me to appreciate simplicity. When people think caricatures, they usually think overly detailed faces on a boardwalk. There's a lot of cartoons featuring simplistic designs, yet during those special episodes, guest starring a crack-addicted celebrity cameo, we get this jump in detail. <gasps> You're Matt Damon! The fuck is that? I loved your video, and, well, I was hoping we could make it into a whole TV show. Wow! Up yours, Matt Damon! <laughs> Trying to get that celebrity face to be recognizable and within the art style is a balancing act. But Clerks managed to break it all down to such minimalism. For some reason, this just stuck with me and so much of my art from the podcast profiles to whenever I draw a recognizable star or character. Much of my thought process is how much can I simplify something yet still make it recognizable and cool? Hey, do any musicians need album art? Machine Gun Kelly, you like 2000 stuff? I'll hook you up. <laughs> 
So, good news, because the art was by Stefan Silver, I can finally stop repeating, Hey, he designed this, Kim Possible, and Danny Phantom's cast. I already reviewed those three shows, it's done, I don't gotta parrot that trivia anymore. Whew. End of an era. So you would think a six episode series would not have that much history, but it just keeps getting deeper. For my next segment, I take you to a newly formed studio in 2001. Powerhouse Animation. Wait, 2001? Powerhouse existed before the Castlevania show? Yeah, made up of five employees, they were a 2D studio struggling as 3D was taking away their work. Things were slow, so they weren't getting paid well, but one of their first projects was entering a contest meant to parody Marvel Comics. Animated in Flash 3, they made this parody mixing Marvel and Clerks called Heroes. Later, you homo. I'm not gay. I don't know, man. The shiny stoner's got a point. Never have seen you with a woman before. I've been with plenty of women. Before it was submitted to the contest, Powerhouse's crew sent it to friends to get their critique. Though one friend sent it to another and they passed it around too. Lesson learned, never trust anyone with a secret. Eventually, the cartoon found its way to Joe Quesada, an editor-in-chief in Marvel Comics? Y you know what? I take it back. If you got a secret, tell everybody. Tell the damn world. If you ever accidentally gave a kid permanent brain damage by slamming a swing set into their neck in the second grade around 1999 in Donna ISD Run Elementary, keep telling everybody. You never know what opportunities may come. What Sorry. the fuck are you talking about? This tiny studio was flooded with phone calls and website hits, which their web host charged them for the overflow in traffic. Dang, we gotta start charging people for going viral again. This was all going great, but suddenly, the phone rang, and at the other end, it was Kevin Smith. He was supportive of the studio and even got them to animate a fake commercial that was left unused in his film, Dogma. My Catholic upbringing prevents me from watching that. They even made a test animation for a potential cartoon revival, Clerks Sell Out, which obviously never happened. Still, very impressive for Adobe Flash in 2004, and with some obvious rotoscoping. <laughs> If that was enough, for the 10th anniversary of the live-action Clerks debut, Powerhouse animated a deleted scene. Halfway through the movie, co-workers Dante and Randall attend a funeral only to piss everyone off. We originally never saw what exactly happened inside as it was never filmed due to budget reasons, but thanks to animation, now we could. We didn't shoot it because uh, it would have been too expensive. And we were going to have to secure permission to shoot at a location that wasn't Quick Stop and RST, which we had the run of the house on. Yeah. And we would have had to get a casket and get extras, you know, to play mourners and whatnot. Um, it leads more to the imagination. Leads more to the imagination to like what they did when they went inside the the funeral parlor, uh, and then they talk about it when they get back to the store. So just to prove to you that your imagination might have been completely Probably wrong. way better than whatever we did. Kevin continued to hire the studio for various podcast animations, iPhone apps, and other projects. He really showed how supportive he was to what started as a five-person studio. That's the best photo you can find? In a 2010 blog post on their official site, Powerhouse thanked Kevin, claiming without him, Powerhouse may not have existed at all. No Castlevania, no Seismanos, no animation for a ton of games like Epic Mickey, League of Legends, or Sonic Origins. This is likely the reason why they let Kevin handle the... 2021 He-Man show that everybody absolutely loved! Yeah! But anyway, let's wrap this video up. Is it safe? Is what safe? Is it safe? Yes. Is it safe? Is it safe? Is it safe? Stop it! I just want some smoke! Is it safe? Yeah, I love the movie, Clerk, but I think your show sucks hard. It's color, right? And nobody curses? It's nothing like the movie with all the monkeys? That wasn't even a question. Yeah, 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 yeah. Science says segments. Got it. You know, sitting here with all these movies, I was just thinking about all the cool celebrities that have stopped into the Quick Stop over the years. I said get out of here. We're closed. Get the hell out. Get the hell out, Scorsese. Screw you, Miss Hepburn. Up yours, Matt Damon. We've 
sure seen our share of stars for a little convenience store in New Jersey. I also feel that you guys come off as gay on the show. Right, mate? You're a cigarette. Looking back, it was the best summer of my life. Snooch to the nooch. With six episodes, there's always been a demand for more, and yeah, Kevin Smith's been teasing it for years. He's even listed off episode ideas that were never made. Pause the video now if you want to read them quietly to yourself in the darkness. But one major hurdle preventing a revival is just who owns this show? Disney, ABC, Miramax, apparently it's in some legal spaghetti that's got to be sorted out. If they do, I hope they can get some of the writers back or new people with the right energy. Because Clerks was made within the halls of Disney TV animation, much of those artists, directors, and boarders went on to also do Kim Possible. This was a pretty strong creative team, like even Batman the Animated Series writer Paul Dini wrote on this. I'd love to one day see new episodes with returning characters from Kevin's other movies. It's gotta happen someday. We produced the show in the same building that Disney TV animation produced a recess and all those other shows. And it was fun because we were just these bad kids in the corner, you know, doing all the naughty humor. And some people thought it was really cool. And other people were just like, oh, it's terrible that Disney is making such a show. But we enjoyed every minute of it. Next week on Clerks. We're almost there.